Hello, I am Sivam Krish. In our last lecture, which introduced the digitization of design, we discussed broadly the need to understand the many aspects that have driven the digitization of design. Today, we will discuss the evolution of computers. Let me start with what my professor once told me. Did you know, Sivam, that all my friends married computers? This was shocking. How could this be? He was a professor of aerospace engineering. In his days, aerospace companies had many computers. The ladies who operated these computers were also apparently called computers. Many of his engineer friends ended up marrying them. So after all, he was not joking. His friends did marry computers. Lesson 1. Computers will continue to evolve in unimaginable ways. Now, let's look at how the UNIVAC, the Universal Automatic Computer, evolved through the ages. Let's first look at Apple computers. Apple Corporation lists the development of its computers in a linear fashion. But if you look at the overall pattern of computer evolution, something similar to an evolutionary tree appears. We will get to evolution later. Few would disagree that we have seen amazing developments in computers in our own lifetime. This is driven by the developments in hardware and software. Let's look at the hardware side first. Computers, as you know, are powered by chips. These chips are a collection of transistors. An Intel chip has about billion of these transistors. We now produce more transistors than grains of rice. It's cheaper now to produce a transistor than a grain of rice. So, enormous amounts of computational power is now available at decreasing cost. Let's see the implication of this. You can see from this graph how computational capacity is evolving from the 60s. The interesting thing here is that reality seems to be ahead of predictions. Computer capacity is improving faster than it was predicted, as you can see from these green lines, which are getting steeper and steeper. In 2010, we should be developing adaptive and imaginative capacity. We should be close to a monkey stage by now. The next stage is going to be very interesting as we evolve through human capacity. Computers are poised to exceed it. Not only that, they are increasingly connected with each other. I'm not sure if cloud computing was thought of when this chart was drawn. We will enter in the next few decades an even more exciting future where computers not only exceed the computational capacity of the human brain, but the entire computational capacity of humanity. Bill Gates, a great pragmatist and rarely considered a visionary, had this to say. Envision a future in which information technologies have advanced so far and so fast that they enable humanity to transcend its biological limitations, transforming our lives in a way we can't imagine. Ray Kurzweil calls this point singularity. He has written a book about this. According to his predictions, in 2050, computational capacity will exceed human capacity. 
Now, this is interesting. And in a very strange way, this is what generative design is all about. Translating computational capacity to creative capacity that exceeds human creativity and imagination. So, this is what we are talking about and this is what we are building towards in this course. We are now at this crossover point. The changes that computers bring to design are profound. It's not about software, it's not about CAD tools, it's not about what you can do. It's about the way we need to change the way we think about design. We now know that we are very dependent on computers for everything. So my professor was right. We are all married to computers. Marriages usually change the way we live and the way we think. But it does not seem to be so in design. In the following lectures, we will look at how it has influenced the profession of architecture. This lecture comes to you from the lost continent, from the city of Adelaide. Thanks for watching.